is the problem of the day for September 23rd. They give us an equation. It says, one formula used by highway safety engineers relates minimum stopping distance D in feet to vehicle speed S in miles per hour. So, the first part of this, A, D, is minimum stopping distance. in feet. And I find it interesting that this formula gives this to us in feet even though the speed is in miles per hour. Happens that way sometimes. Let's talk about that. The speed, S is the speed in MPH, miles per hour. And there's a formula that shows how it's going to take, how long it will take your car 1.1 s to stop. That is the distance, the minimum stopping distance in feet equals 0 0.05 times s squared plus 1.1 s. <clears throat> Using my handy dandy overhead calculator, and I honestly don't know if this is going to turn up on the video, but watch and see how I do this. All I'm doing is I'm basically just typing that equation in here. 0 0.05 and instead of s squared, I'm going to put in the value of s that it gives me. 60 squared uh, plus 1.1 times 60. What did you guys get for an answer? Anybody else get that? Anybody get something different? Nope, that's what I got too. 246 feet. Anyway. Um, this is not the only way to do this problem on the calculator. There's actually a better one because if I wanted to know what the stopping distance was at 10 miles an hour, 15 miles an hour, 20 miles an hour, 25 miles an hour, and so on up, that's where this calculator becomes more powerful than just your ordinary $1 Walmart calculator. This you could do on any calculator. Let's talk about tables because the second part of this problem says, if it's a car stopped in 120 feet, what's the fastest it could have been traveling? So what we have is a tool. The tool is the calculator. I'm going to, into the calculator, put our formula. 0 0.05, I have to use x squared instead of s <coughs> squared because the calculator only speaks in x's and y's, plus 1.1 x. And then I can look at a table of values. What do you think? Would we... If we were doing this, do you think we should check every one mile an hour, five miles an hour, ten miles an hour, twenty? Somebody give me a number. Why every one? Well, because we went to ten, but then we had to go down to one to check to see. Okay. To get a better answer. Okay, I'm going to go to my table settings. I'm going to start at zero. I'm going to start by going up by tens. Okay. To see what's going on here. And all I did on my calculator, and TI Inspire people, I can show you this later. Um, I press second and the window button to get to the table setup, and I'm making table start equal to zero, and the change in the table, this little triangle means change, change in the table for 10. I can go back and change that at any time. It's very easy to switch around. Second table, and I've got. Um, a list of things. Now, am I looking for a speed or am I looking for a distance? distance? They give me the distance of 120. Right here in the distance column, which is the y's, that's the dependent variable, I've got 124. I can use that just to estimate and I'd be comfortable if you answered you could be going at most 40 miles an hour. Okay, because the difference between 120 feet and 124 feet is not mathematically significant here. But I bet we can do a little bit better. This is how uh, solving these problems using the tables becomes really powerful because now I know that it's somewhere near 40. And I can zoom into it by going back to my table settings. And for table start, I'm going to make it 40. And I went up by 10 miles an hour at a time. Now I'm going to make it 1 mile an hour. 
and go back to the table. Now I can see that it starts at 40. And here's the same 124 that I had. And if I go up, all right, 39 is 119 feet. So somewhere between 39 and 40 miles an hour. And that's good enough.